Welcome to Kinship Birth Connections. I'm your host, Lauren Archer, and today's featured influencer is the one and only Heather Booth. Heather and our beloved Susan Davis Mora have been friends for many years, and they've both been active in the arena of women's rights, social justice, and environmental sustainability for decades. Among her many accomplishments, Heather was the founding director and is now president of Midwest Academy, an organization that provides training for social change leaders and organizers. But rather than have me read her bio, there is an entire film that has been produced about Heather's work. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Heather's given us permission to watch this brief three and a half minute overview. So let's take a look. You have to go through life with more than just passion for change. You need a strategy and your plan better include voting. You see, change requires more than righteous anger. It requires a program and it requires organizing. They said to me, Elizabeth, if you really want to push for this consumer agency, you got to get organized. And I said, great, how? They said, I've got two words for you, Heather Booth. I view my role as an organizer. To be an organizer, you have to love people and hate injustice. I was one of a number of Northern students that went down to do voter registration. We saw the value of working for a goal that was much larger than ourselves. We saw he really could create change, change people's lives, change the reality by taking action. What makes you think you stand a chance up against those kind of forces? <laughs> well, first of all, it's a David and Goliath fight. We should remember that sometimes David wins. <laughs> the, the threshold belief of organizers is that it is grassroots, ordinary people putting pressure on elected officials at all levels that is the key ingredient for changing policy. It's not a theoretical thing. It's teaching the, the practices and principles and then making sure people then go out and do it. Before Heather, we didn't have a way to teach strategy. If you look at significant times in the movement, Heather is there someplace. I mean, it's like Zelig. I took the challenge seriously. I set up a training center called Midwest Academy. So what is a strategy? The way I look at a strategy, it's a strategy of I said, it'll never work, you can't teach organizing. And she said, well, why don't you come out here and see what we're doing? So I did and, and discovered that it did work, much to my surprise. Imagine a world if you're a single mother, you don't live in poverty. Imagine a world where if you're a young black man, you're not racially profiled by the police. That world is only possible if we organize and only if we organize. And the bell has sounded, bringing to a close an extraordinary day on Wall Street. They were spending literally more than a million dollars a day to lobby against the financial reforms and principally the consumer agency. Heather got our groups together and just kept growing. The number of groups kept showing them what was possible. The question now isn't, are you willing to die for freedom? It's also, will you live for freedom and build organization and support movements that will make change? Heather, thank you so much for being with us. Tell us a little bit about who you are and the work that you have dedicated your life to. Well, I'm glad to do that. I first want to thank you, Lauren. You are a gem. You are magnifying the work that Susan Davis has been able to do, developing this KINS network, using your organizational, creative management program skills. And so I'm grateful for you. And of course, grateful to Susan, who has been an inspiration, who does her work based on a values-based uh, belief in people and that we are stronger together. And she's particularly focused on how an entrepreneurial sector can help improve the lives 
of people and of the planet. I've been glad to be her friend for oh, 50 years or more and look forward to the next chapter that you're helping to develop. Thank you. Thank you. For my own background, I became involved in social change work first in the civil rights movement. When I was a pretty young teenager, I was involved in support of uh, people working to support the sit-ins against Woolworths, which wouldn't let African-Americans sit at their lunch counters in the South. I supported that effort and then found my way to SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Went to Mississippi in 1964 when Northern students were recruited to come down and support the heroic work of poor black people in Mississippi. And under incredibly threatening, life-threatening situations, I saw that when you organize, you can change this world, but you need to take action, you need to organize. And from that, ended up developing a training center for organizers, built many organizations, and have had a life in the movement following through on that insight. So, so that's the work that I do. I view myself as an organizer, also values driven, in, in a way guided by three main principles that based on our values, I wanna see that we actually improve lives and win reforms and victories that improve lives. Two, we give people a sense of their own power so they see that the change was won through their effort, not just through some other benevolent force, as kind and generous as that might be. And three, that we build for systemic changes. So in addition to an improvement in lives, we make changes that will put more power in the hands of real people and limit an arbitrary power in the hands of those who now make decisions often less regarding uh, the welfare and futures of most people on this planet. Amazing work. And there is a film about your work that will be pointing people to. Um, thank you so much for everything that you have done. Clearly, your principles are in alignment with Susan's and with the Kin's principles, especially allowing people to have their own power, you know, allowing people to bring their own strengths to the table. But you have a special secret sauce, I might call it, um, a, a vision of the power of organization. And I think that is so valuable where we are right now because there are so many disparate groups uh, trying to make change. And the power of bringing people together for a common cause is what I've witnessed with you, what really makes that social change. So in your opinion, when you look at so many, we might call them do-gooders, but people who are really out there doing a lot of great work, what are some ways that we can start thinking about working together, collaborating, organizing? Well, this is a moment, first of all, we have to realize how urgent it is that we do that. Um, it's a moment where I really think we are on a knife's edge of which direction we go. On the one hand, there feels more beauty, opportunity, connectedness, creativity, variety, diversity in the movements and organizing for change. Kin's Network is part of it. Grassroots organizing is part of it. In the US, everything from Black Lives Matter to the Dreamers to the Fight for 15 to, there's so many parts of, uh, the world and of the U.S. society, most of my work is now in the U.S., uh, where people are finding their voice and also realizing that we are stronger together, even though we may have different issues, cultures, styles of our work, but we are unified and uh, not 
not each other's enemy, that one strength doesn't take away from another, that we need to build together. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I feel we're on this knife's edge where what really is posed uh, is potentially an autocratic, even fascist takeover where democracy itself is threatened, people's lives are threatened. Having the tools for remaking our society in a more caring, decent and better world themselves are threatened. So I feel it's a decision point. And to make the change we want to see, we have to realize we are stronger together and we need each other. It's one of the great joys of the Kins Network, of the networks that Susan has developed her whole life, where people magnify and reinforce each other with generosity, realizing that together we can create abundance. So true, right. Susan has always said we are not in competition and each individual has their own life destiny path, their own sets of skills and talents and passions. And when you're in alignment with that and giving from that place of generosity and care, then you're, you know, that's where your, your most power is. I think we do need is to feel greater confidence in ourselves that we can make a difference, that our voices do matter, and that we're in alignments where our voices are heard. It may not be exactly what's followed, but we do have a voice. It's why small d democracy matters to me so much. So much of the society tells us we're not good enough, we don't know enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not thin enough. You're not enough. And part of what Kins does, part of what you do and Susan does, and part of organizing is to let people know they do matter. They're more than enough. We are the leadership that we've been waiting for. We need some additional tools and we need a will to come together. We also need a strategy by how will we make the change that we want to see in the world. So at Midwest Academy, you teach about strategies for organizing. Can you give us a sneak peek? Um, if, if someone were to want to get involved or if, you know, if you would just say, okay, here's, here's a group of people uh, that are working in their own different places and they want to come together and organize, what are some top strategies that uh, you can share with us? Having a strategy which means a plan of action that starts with knowing where you want to go. What's your vision? If you don't know where you want to go, anything you do matters. Oh, let's invest in this new company. Oh, let's uh, give water to those without water. Oh, let's uh, have a Twitter storm. Oh, let's go down to City Hall. All of those may be good ideas but it's not a plan to get to where you want to go. So it starts with knowing where you want to go. And the plan for getting from where you are to where you want to go is what we talk about as a strategy. Yeah. With the academy, our training center, we look at five key categories for developing a strategy. The first is based on our values, a clarification of our goals. And much of it's obvious. In fact, I often say that good organizing is sometimes the obvious made explicit and then putting effort behind it. So sometimes you say, oh, I knew that. But not everyone was on the same page because we didn't have a shared sense. And then on the goals, so we have goals by time, long-term, mid-term, short-term. And we have goals by kind of goal. What are the goals that actually improve lives, are concrete victories that puts money into people's pocket, puts food on the table? Then there are goals that are participation goals. Um, how do we increase people's power, their own self-confidence, give them a voice, give a, a chance to, uh, to speak what they think? 
And that winning that itself is a goal. And then the third is giving people a sense of their own power and putting structures in place that give empowerment to real people in addition to winning these victories. So the first are clarification of goals. The second is clarifying who has the power to make those decisions. Now, the people with the power to make the decisions, they may be your friends, they may be your opposition, but they are the decision makers. They may be elected officials, corporate heads, administrative heads, media personalities. So you need to know who your effort is focused on to influence, and then how can you influence them? What power do they really have? And it looks at a power building strategy. What power do they have? What power will they listen to? And that brings us to the third category. So it's goals, decision makers to achieve the goals, and then the, the constituencies or influencers to influence the decision makers to achieve the goals. And there are many kinds of constituencies. There are voters, they're consumers, they're funders, they're uh, media people, there are uh, people who can create visibility, there are uh, personal friends. And those are the people that we hope to organize and pull together to cohere in a larger group and voice our shared concerns to influence those decision makers to achieve the goals. The fourth category are what resources do we need? What do we have? Sometimes it's money, but it may be research. It may be other kinds of expertise. Do we need a physical office? Do we need um, uh, technological tools? And again, it's the resources we need to build the organization, to cohere the constituencies, to influence the decision makers, to achieve the goals. And the last category are the tactics. What are the events we would take on? And many people go to the events first. Oh, we need a demonstration. We need a letter writing campaign. We need to all tweet at the same time. Those may be good tactics. We need an election power. We need to register people to vote, but they're all tactics that fit into a longer plan. And those are the five main categories in a strategy. In addition, we need to know what is our message? What do we say? And having a unified way to talk about what our plans are so that people that we want to persuade are persuaded. And then we put it all in a timeline and that together becomes a strategy. I love it. It's so clear and it does sound obvious, but you're right. A lot of people, I think, jump right to what are the tactics? Okay, let's just start, let's start getting into action without having that bigger picture of the strategy and the goals. What's your perspective on making sure that the language you use in your communications with your target audience is approachable, not only for those in the movement, but for those who you are attempting to shift uh, their opinion or their actions? Well, there are many things we need to do at once. One part is inspiring and energizing those who might be for us, but don't know that they really can make a difference. And so motivating those who are already, would be for greater pay for working people or clean air or believe that everyone should have health care and know that they need it. But they don't know they can make a difference. So a highest priority is ensuring that we at least speak to people across areas of other cultural, social, and economic differences. We sometimes use language saying, regardless of your zip code, regardless of where you live or your geography or your background, when we are together, we can move forward together on these particular concerns. Yeah. Then there are people who aren't sure. They like part of what you're doing, 
We have questions about other parts. And so we have to find the area of shared interest. So it's important that we start not by just saying, this is what I want, but to understand what does the other person want? What is it that might unify us even from areas of difference? And it also means then that you have to know who you're trying to persuade. Right. And, Which comes uh, back to your basic principle. You have to have that strategy. Now, do you have tools available for people to be able to look? I think I saw your, um, your, your um, what is it called? The grid. Um, on, the strategy on the part. The well, there is, we have a training center called Midwest Academy. Mm -hmm. And that uh, the, the link for that is www.midwestacademy.com. Uh, though it's called Midwest Academy, it's a, a national, even international training center that teach people the skills of organizing, uh, whatever the issue, uh, from building a, a stronger community to healthcare, to financial reform, to reforms on social security and ensuring people have a good childhood and a good um, old age uh, and all, all parts in between. So in that, the Midwest Academy has regular training sessions and we also have this strategic planning tool and other tools. We've now gone virtual. All of our training used to be in person. And uh, I still long for those days where we can do the more of the training in person, but it's now virtual too. Great. And then there are other um, lists and tools if people are interested uh, and we try and provide coaching support and consulting for organizations and individuals. And we encourage you to get in touch with us uh, at Midwest Academy. I can't imagine how many groups that you have championed to, to do this kind of work. Um, is there a secret? You mentioned, you know, empowering leaders. Is there a secret to keeping the momentum going once you have established the organization? Uh, then how do you maintain that? How do you maintain that fire, that passion? That is always an issue. Well, first you have to also decide, do you want to do something long-term or is it a short-term effort? Mm -hmm. Sometimes short-term efforts may be just what you need. Or you may start an effort and maybe a third of the people are in it just for that one particular concern. They wanted their road paved. They wanted more uh, the lead out of the pipes in their water. Uh, they wanted broadband. Um, they wanted more money on the job. There may be other people who'll say, well, I'll come in on this concern and I'll come in on this concern, but they're not an ongoing part of the effort. And then there are people who join and support and are there consistently. But for those who want to sustain organization and realize the value of organization, I'd say one is to build a culture of caring in what in the civil rights movement, some of us called a beloved community, so that you want to be with other people. They're people who take joy in each other's success and victory and support each other. So it's a community you wanna to go to. A second is that there is a strategic plan. So hopefully it's more victorious in winning, but even if you don't win, you feel you are in this together and you help shape the plan. So you feel greater confidence in the direction. And then the third is regular evaluation and assessment to say, okay, we were just through this effort and there's an ebb and flow. Now is the time, you know, it's uh, like, in the, like in the Bible, there's a, for every, yes. for every time, everything there is a season. A time to grow, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to um, pass on what you've learned. If there is one thing that you wish more people knew in order to be more persuasive or more effective in the world, what would that be? Maybe the most important thing is that you can be the kind of change you'd like to see in the world. You can make this a better world. You are good enough, you are smart enough, you are talented enough. And if you have a wish 
to see a world that is more just and equitable and fair and with a small d democratic. We can join together. And when we organize, we have changed this world. And when we organize, we will change this world. So powerful. Heather, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us, for embodying all the principles that you and Susan share, generosity, focusing on the good, cooperation, collaboration, all of those amazing principles. Um, and again, people can reach you at Midwest Academy. If people are interested in the organizing, uh, there's Midwest Academy. If people are just in a personal connection and they're in touch with you or Susan or the Kins okay. Network, I'm glad to respond. And mostly I, I thank you all for the ways in which you make this a, uh, a better world, more sustainable, more just, more democratic, and more hopeful about the future. So thanks to you, Lauren. Thanks to Susan. Thanks to the Kins Network. Thank you, Heather. Thank you for connecting with us at Kinship Earth. You can watch the film, Heather Booth, Changing the World, on several channels. You'll find links in the show notes. And for more information about Susan Davis Mora and Kinship Earth Connections, please visit us at kinshipearth.org.